We are live with another episode of Honkai Star Rail. How are we doing, everyone? Howdy, Xavier. Good to see you in the chat. Are you postman now? No, I man, I am a barkeep. Hey, no break. Good to see you. I was just about to check the new version of the Lyrnia Wars doc. Oh, is that so, Xavier? Yeah, I'm. I'm very happy with how it's turning out. It's looking really good. There doesn't seem to be any major problems. Overall, it seems like it's coming together pretty much exactly as I initially um, had outlined. So the problem right now is figuring out just how much extra data I'm going to be putting in here that I haven't already accounted for. But we'll see how that goes. But until then, I think this thing has probably gone over one cycle already, right? I'm pretty sure it's been more than five minutes. But yeah, this was my, uh, this was the one where I finally got over 20k points, chat. I got the full rewards. It took a while, but I did finally get it. Just had to, like, do a few tries each day until I got it. Hide is so pretty. Shake my head. Uh... I think it's definitely one of the nicer looking areas, sure. The problem is I think DS2 overall just takes away from any natural beauty that could be in some of them. Hmm. How can a button be so stubborn? I gotta wonder that myself. Yeah, nothing else. I'm at max level, Chet. What do I have to talk to Pom Pom for? The answer is a whole of the data. Oh god, I hope not. Lear Wars is one of those smaller scope uh analyses that I don't think we need to cover everything. I think I'm going to also skip talking about kids and stuff with uh, Radigan and Renala because I don't know how much of their background I'm going to want to talk about there versus elsewhere. Again, I may talk about it in the future or add it to that analysis somewhere down the line, but for now, I think I'm going to ignore it. <laughs> Listening to its sea waves crashing while on stream. Crashing? Second guess, Fireman. <laughs> Nope, not a fireman. I do have some fire women, though. Where are they? Where's my fire? Where are my fire ladies? Where they? There they are. I was using these when I was having to do my farming for the week. Gonna do a separate thing for marriage of Friday, get rid of all and their kids. No, no, no. The wedding is gonna be there based on the current analysis, but the problem is like the actual. Um, the actual children aspect, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle. Because, one, there's the question of, you know, just having, um, the idea of Renala having other daughters besides Ronnie. Um, so I'd have to address that. And then there's the fact that, um, Ronnie, Renala, I'm uh, sorry, Ronnie, uh, Rikard, and, uh, Radon already have, um, individual analyses where I could go over their life stories. So, if that's the case... How much would I really be covering of them, and how much would I want to cover in what is ostensibly a Lyernian Wars post, right? Like, I'm talking about the lead-up, the actual conflict, and the aftermath of the war. And the aftermath stuff has a lot of important, uh, stuff in it. Do I really want to cut from that analysis in order to put into a separate thing about, um, their private lives along with, like, some of the public policy decision changes? That's the question I have. What do you think of the Haida Undead Krypton Gravies, Loki, bro? Um, I've talked about this before. There are some connections in that respect with um, the Undead Crypt and Haida, but I don't know how deeply we should look into it because there's such a overlap there. So you could argue there's like a cultural uh, diffusion because Haida had contact with the Undead Crypt and then brought it back over to their civilization. Or like you said, to some extent, there could be the idea of um, the Undead Crypt sort of spawning a lot of the ruins, at least around Haida, like the Shrine of Amana. That's my thoughts on it, no, Bray. Third guess, escort services? No, unfortunate. Unfortunate. Unfortunate, none of these ladies are willing to sell themselves. Actually, very fortunate. Don't do that. Please have more respect for yourself, women. Anyway. Moving right along. We have an event to do, chat. Now, we haven't finished this yet. I don't know how much we're going to do anymore. I think we might stop and start running around some more to do some more side content. It just depends on how much I want to, like, you do these heavy story events without voice acting. I kind of wish this one was voice acted, to be honest. Like, this definitely feels like one of those events I wish had some more voice acting to it. We'll just see how it goes. But, that said, I am enjoying the event itself. It is a fun concept of making, making, uh, drinks for, uh, memes. Woo! Time to figure out how to deduce the recipe for specific drinks. Alright. 
Oh, there! I told you to make a super thick drink in a small glass, you hear me? Uh, what are you looking at? Remember, I don't care who you think you are. As long as you're behind that dilapidated lounge and have those dirty glasses next to you, then you better listen to me and do what I want. I'm the one paying you, got it? If you catch my drift, then hurry up and stop mixing your drinks. Stop pretending like you're doing something. I don't need any reminders of that idiot. Rude customers like this really get my blood boiling. Let's start preparing the drink. Uh, you already learned free mixing. Okay. Of course, both methods can fulfill certain requirements. But this time, let's try using the free mixing method to fulfill the client's needs. Some super thick drink in a small glass. So, uh, this'll do, right? Here, let's give him a little ice. Yeah, one ice cube, bub. And what we want is thickness. So the ultimate syrup. I mean, we could stop right here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah! You have to fill the glass, that's right. Okay. Okay. Hmm. I think we stir it. Yeah, I create that purple slop. And then we add this. Boom. It's beautiful, isn't it, chat? This is what I call perfection. Brother Hanu approves. I became Pope? When did I become Pope? Also, whoopsie. I'm not paying attention to what the guy's saying. Oh, it's fine. You guys can read, right? 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 He's rude. He doesn't deserve it. Ha <laughs> That's what I want! Anyone smart enough to listen to basic orders will make a little bit of a scratch at the very least. You are coming for Siobhan? Can a fool like you come with any interesting drinks? What a joke. I'm not kidding when I say I've been a painter of this lounge since it started. Back then, there weren't even proper tables. The counter was just thrown together and would fall apart if you put any weight on it. This place didn't even have the full range of ingredients. Even considering how awful the drinks were back then, the drink you made was just the worst. What killed me even more was... Even after I told you I was a regular of this lounge, you still didn't show me respect. Is that how a server should act? Huh? Listen here. You're new, so you better act like it. Be sure to bow, do your job right, and serve your customers. Be the humblest you can be. I'm here to buy happiness, so you should be making me feel special. Got it? Poop like Aldridge. I'm not poop. Ah, uh, let's see. It's pointless tell I, to tell you. Just give me a small glass. I want it sweet and clearly colored layers. I got a great eye that's allergic to things that lack aesthetics. That's some strange aesthetics regarding layers. All right. Let's start preparing the drink. So small glass of sweet multicolored layer distinctive drink. Two color layers and sweet. All right, we'll give him the fancy glass now. Um, we'll use no ice. Huh. Nothing for double. Yeah, nothing for double sweetness. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. We're gonna stir so we give him that second color layer. There we are. Boom. Gosh, it looks absolutely delectable. There we go. Clocky approved, Jet. Whoa, this drink matches the blue on me. Nice touch. Drink is perfect a small glass. Too much can ruin the flavor. The mere scent brings me happiness. Hey, evening, Loki. I need a drink. Could you mix something for me, please? Nah, Raijin. I'm a little bit busy with these customers. They're kind of a handful. You got decent taste. I made my demands clear, and I can make some palatable stuff for you. That's all. Run down place with an awful drinksmith and dumb monsters. Ha! Are you all hiding here, playing house? What? What's the matter? Got something to say? Here's your chance. Spit it out. Poke it with your stir stick. 
Jeez, is that how you treat a customer? You stay right there. I'm going to work you into scrap metal. Take out the baseball bat. Take out the lance. All right, we take out the baseball bat on this clock. Just you wait. I've got a lot of days ahead of us. Don't assume that Shivali can protect you. Just you wait. Me and Nobre, me no understand what you follow us speak now. <laughs> Trying to understand I am in Nobre. Uh, quite the rude and arrogant monster. It's quite big, though. Record information about the Tin Man. Arrogant narcissist full of themselves. Irritable, gets angry all the time, ignores other people's feelings. Yep. Seems about right. What I am isn't here, Loki, bro. You tripping? I said I man. I man. Yeah, scholar of Corland. Uh, I forget. I forget, uh, I man, because you changed your name. Not everybody remembers what you go by on here. We got other customers still to deal with. Oh, goodness me. Hey, I got something for that. <laughs> the dice roll as fate plays its tune. Dang, it's you again. <laughs> How much money do you owe? Did you sign a contract or a letter of guarantee that you're going to work this lodge until it's back to its former glory? Listen here, just forget about it. Why not enjoy this time? Let's play dice. Come on, test your luck. Let's get started. Are you going big or small? Big or small? The dealer calls the shots and all bets are in. Lose and you got to pay. Win and you don't. Uh, Goldberg. All or nothing, chat. You sure you want to choose big? Big, big, big. Oh, now that I think about it, I bet it's going to be big. Because all those small numbers have been scratched off by me. They're not comfortable to sit on. Always when you want to rush to the bathroom. So, you going big? Not going to change? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Go big or go home. Also, you don't have numbers on here. You just have spades and hearts and, and diamonds. and oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very similar, uh, no, Bray. I can understand why you got confused. Yeah, I'm on the edge of my seat. Is it small or is it small? Crack! The dealer starts to tap dance for you, and the dice roll faster and faster, keeping in time with the performance. Just as your body catches the rhythm and starts to sway, the dance ends abruptly. You can see plain as day that each side of the dice is a single dot. <laughs> it was small, just as I expected. Ah, it's my fault. I put in too much force when digging into the dice. Looks like I made a pin instead. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to say that you lost. But that's okay. I'm bored now. I feel super worn out. Give me a drink, quick. I want uh, that uh, drink that's in a small glass and has a strong taste. A taste that rejuvenates my spirit instantly. Players, remember to replace your electrolytes after exercise. I don't think I can fill this request in the drink menu. Don't do a flare with the glasses. Crash, the glass shatters the piece on the ground. Looks like your skills could use some work. So preparing the drink. Damn. Damn, chat. Hey, I am. We were just talking about you. Speak of the devil. We have to free mix it. Small and strong. All right. We're gonna do no ice. Needs to be strong, huh? Hmm. -hmm. Needs to only be one. So. There we go. There we go. We're gonna mix it all together into one jet. There we are. Um, we'll put a sliced lemon. I like this red you mix. Look, this drink is so radiant, it's so pretty. Clack, 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 it's flawless. Oh, they're sinking to the glass. Bottoms up! We drink a Japanese slipper. I, I, I don't think I don't think we have Japanese slipper on the menu. I man, I'm sorry to say. What's happening? I'm serving means. <laughs> I'm feeling so good that I'm flying. I wanna feel this happy every day. Speaking of which, I just thought of something very sad again. <laughs> I was once a good kid, you know, the kind who literally couldn't have gotten small if he said he was going to go big. That was true up until <laughs> until. I was assigned to work at the hotel. The environment here is just the worst. The air is so stuffy, and they won't even let me go to the bathroom when I want. They're suffocating me. Oh, I, I mean emotionally suffocating. Those people in black suits are always watching. They never give me time to rest. <laughs> For long, I found myself forgetting if I should toss big or small. To be honest, it's never really that important. 
Does it matter or not? Clearly the guests are the ones playing. Yet you want me to cheat? Give me another drink. This time I want a, a large glass. Bitter and super strong. Small and large, I'll drink them all. They're all the same. No problem. A large, huh? What's that glass should I choose? All right. They don't want to supersize me. All right, big Glaeus. He wants it to be not that bitter. Less than negative one bitterness. All right. I can do this, chat. I can do this. I've been made for this moment. But he also wants it super strong. So we go super strong. And then... There we go. Oh, no, no, no. It's supposed to be the... Uh, we have to... We have to... Hold on. I'm wasting. I'm wasting perfectly. Perfectly good money here. Dang. All right. There we go. Yeah. Less than negative one. Uh-huh. 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 Ooh, ooh, ooh. So I need it to be on two, but I also need it to be on negative one. Right, I could just use the same one twice. That's fine, right? Yeah. Let's stir it. How's it turn out? Oh, it's ugly, chat. Ugly. We stir this. Okay, good. Boom. Boom. There we go. Now it looks at least somewhat decent. Well, let's go with Origami Bird. We haven't tried that yet. Invigorating revitalizing taste! Wahoo! Bottoms up! Love it! I love such exciting flavors! Sticky white stuff. We're not serving sticky white stuff. Sin would be so disappointed. <laughs> Listen, I'm sure Sin will accept not having, what was it, Japanese slippers on the menu. He's serving DS2 copies. Listen, just because I said memes doesn't mean I said a joke. <laughs> I love when I was modding DS2, I discovered some cut Navalon line, which are alternate translations that sound way better than the final lines they went with. Like, Navalon didn't call uh, Shaun of the Muse, just the strange girl. Yeah, what happens is, is that the localization has lines. I think they do, like, a rough translation where they have it, like, closer to the original because it's super raw. And then they start polishing it up to add their little, like, you know, special touch to it, you know? And sometimes that works, right? Just make it sound more natural or something with the dialogue or what have you. But a lot of times it has them doing a lot of unnecessary insertions into the script that just weren't there originally. Restored them in-game and took out the weird line where Novelon says Kale somehow touched him. <laughs> God, that sounds so funny when looked into a, at a vacuum. Oh, my God. Anyway. Ah, the deeper the goblet, the truer the friendship. I love that you can understand me. Uh, I'm off. I remember you, newbie drink smith. <laughs> I feel so good. I want to sing. Can we stick together? We don't need to worry about the band, guys. We'll just pack up and leave if the family's too powerful. There's no need to be worry. Better be hungry than angry. I just heard a bunch of Spade's thoughts. I guess he must trust me more now. There we go. Yeah, trust 100%. I got it. A court coaster. And I have Siobhan gifted you. It's said to have a mysterious property that allows entry to Monster's Emoscape. A commonplace court coaster adorned with the emblematic logo of the Dream Jolt holstery. The purpose of a coaster is to soften the impact of collisions. <laughs> uh, novel and art. Navalan is Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, uh, did you get joke? Uh, yeah, there's definitely a Jekyll and uh, a Jekyll and Hyde uh, Hyde thing going on with uh, Navalan. So yeah, I got the joke. All right, so uh, I guess that's I guess I have to do the emo scape thing now, right? <laughs> the sort of doggo that brings happiness has returned to visit you. We are looking forward to seeing me. Are you happy? I didn't want you to come at all. I was looking forward to this. I'm so happy. Wait, he 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 wants to be annoyed, so I ha I should be like this. Ah, chat, do I meme on him? I was like, I'm happy. Thank you, but no matter how much you look forward to it, it's pointless. I don't care what you think in the slightest. What? I go wherever I please and say whatever I want. There's nothing anyone can do about me. I used to be like you, busily serving drinks to customers. If anyone says something to me, I just respond with, Roger, woof! 
but one day I had this epiphany. A dog's life is also a life. Rather than let people shave off time from my life, I'll shave it off of theirs. If you don't do anything, no one notice you. All that matters is that you're happy. You still make my blood boil. That, uh, that kind of makes sense. Woof! You're finally got it! But getting it's only the beginning! What's most important is that you take action! Audrey, oh, you're pretty tired! Why not start practicing with me? Make me a large and strong drink and I'll teach you how to interact with people! Is this what happens when people get addicted to DS2 coffees? Yeah, they start thinking that some that non-alcoholic drinks are actually alcoholic. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, wipe the glass clean first. The glass in your hand is a gorgeous glow that makes you feel an incredible sense of comfort. Start preparing the drink. All right, let's do it. He wants something large and strong. We'll give him the fancy wine glass. We'll give him all the ice. I still can't believe they added actual physics to the ice jet. And he just wants it thick. All right, we make it thick. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's how we do it, Jet. That's how we do it. Wait, it's not full yet? Oh, no. Oh, no. Um. Yeah, we have to we have to clear this. Ooh, okay. I think I see what the problem is. I have to make it thick. Ooh, what if I... Nah, I hate it. Listen, chat. If we're gonna do this, we do this right. Boom. Is this not perfection, chat? Mint leaf. Boom. Ruff! What an exciting flavor! Very refreshing! It's the thicker drinks that really hit the spot. Love it! <laughs> you guys are now trying to compare Dark Souls games to drinks. <laughs> I love you guys. The flavor is amazing! From now on, you're the best drink smith in my heart. After drinking this, it's time to teach you how to talk. <laughs> Listen up. Oh, boy. Hey, idiot dog! <laughs> you really want to teach someone with that pathetic brain of yours? Newbie, don't let this dog's appearance dupe you. That dog looks cute, but in reality, everything it has to say is unpleasant. When that dog was a courier, it got the highest number of negative reviews! Making fun of customers, stealing soda, and pocketing tips! It's never done what it's supposed to, beyond wagging that tail of it so happily. Uh, I, I figured that out, you're pretty nuts too. <laughs> I'm crazy, but I've never hurt anyone! You and I don't each other for a while, I never said anything bad about you. Let me tell you! It's a selfish bad mouth dog. It's best if you keep your distance. Don't give yourself unnecessary headaches. Woof! Mr. Dealer is often pulling things out of the air and causing trouble wherever he goes. He's kind of off, you know? No one at the load likes him. Hey! Who are you talking about? I heard everything you just said. If you're gonna talk smack about me behind my back, I'll have to give you a hard time! I'm having a private conversation with our dear Drinksmith here. Mind your own business. Everything Mr. Taylor says is a lie. Don't mind him. He's not like me. I always wag my tail in a friendly way to you. That's the only thing I can do. You think I'd believe you? I believe you. Thank you. You trust me just with a few wags of my tail. You're so easy to fool. Woof! Delish! Hit me with another. I want something sweet, refreshing, something along those lines. I guess it says that these two don't have a good relationship. Activate the drink smith simulator! I can do this, chat. Wait. I need to make something sweet and refreshing. Okay, chat. We're pulling out all the stops here. I'm getting the fancy glass. We're getting all the ice. Sweet and refreshing. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I prepared my whole life for this moment. Alright. So I need to have this exactly at one. Okay. I can do this. 
I got this, chat. I'm a master. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And then we add one right off the top, right there. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, sure, hand. No, 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 no. The doggo deserves the papeshi. Boom. I like the sweetness of this. It tastes all sort of extraordinary. Leaves me refreshed after drinking. I'm sold. I'm curious, Loki. Have you looked into any of the games that were suggested to you by Raiden yet? Uh, no, because I it is tax week, guys. So that has not been my focus whatsoever right now is new games. But yes, I do have it in my thing, so I'll note it. I'll be looking into each and every one of them just to see if there's any that I'm like, oh, we could do this in the near future. Woof! This tastes amazing! With Shimon's on around, you're the greatest instrument here! Woof! You really turned my mood around, but I wonder if I drink too much. I'm seeing lots of black spots. Non alcoholic, by the way. Over here! <laughs> Over here, good little doggy! Let's play! Come with me! I'll take you to a fun place! Woof! You wanna play with me? Wait for me! Uh, Spade took Mr. Bigwig out to play. I wonder if those two will cause trouble. But I feel like I understand Mr. Bigwig more now listening to it. Record information about Mr. Bigwig. There we go. I got my court coaster. Oh yeah, Loki, did you see the debug manager thing I sent you? Um, yes, I saw that in the suggestion. I should have, I should have, uh, replied to it, I think, but... Now, let's see. Elder Ring tastes like a fine old wine. I I would not say that. It's it's a new game still. If anything, Demon Souls is the fine old wine. Anyway, uh... I mean, what do I do now? Yeah, let's just end service for the time being. Eh? Why is there a commotion? Oh, God. Well, first, Chad, I gotta see this. Serve the correct drink to the customer ten times. Yeah. I did it, chat. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Sekiro tastes just like Japanese sake. <laughs> Big wig. Big wig. Oh, whoops. I love this radio. Whoop. You broke it. I want you to pay for it. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to break it. I just uh, held it too tightly and crushed it by accident. <laughs> Are you gonna cry? More, please! What happened? Woof! I let my radio to the dealer out of kindness, but he smashed it on the ground! That was so smashing of any kind! <laughs> to be precise, I only pinched it and it shattered after I applied a little pressure. How fragile. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did you hear him? It wouldn't have happened if the radio was harder than the floor, would it? Oh. You clearly messing with me! I'll tell you it's a precious woof! I'm the drink smith and I call the shots here. <laughs> I'm being frank, newcomer. You gotta help me out. Woof! I didn't do anything. It was all his fault. Neither of them admits any wrongdoing. I should probably ask them separately. Oh, God, chat. I have to resolve customer issues. <sighs> Alright. Let's talk to Mr. Bigwig first. Because he's less of a grain on, strain on my voice. <laughs> it's not my fool! All I did was, uh, land him the radio out of the kindness of my heart. And the next thing I knew, he smashed it! Woof! You're the new tricksmith, you gotta help me. Uh... Let's see. You didn't actually do anything wrong? I did it, Woof! I, I did, uh, taught the dealer a little. I laughed a little loudly and said he didn't have a family. But that doesn't mean he could go and smash my treasure. It was so important to me, and, and, that radio represented important memory for me. Siobhan gave it to me. Siobhan hasn't been around recently. There's no one for me to play with. I'm so lonely. That's the only reason I want to play with the dealer. I made him have no purpose because I wanted to notice me. If I didn't do that, no one would pay attention to me. <laughs> At the very least. If I behave badly, more selfish, I can be happy. At least you talk to me more. 
Maybe he's become so unbearable because no one is spending time with him. I should go into his internal world and see what's going on. Listen, Jet, all I have to say is I trust the doggo. I don't care how obnoxious he is. He just needs some love, okay? I can fix him, Jet. <laughs> Loki, a top-tier employee, the peak of customer services. Wait a second. That's not how you spell any of that. Uh, maybe, uh, let's see. Uh, soothe its feelings. Hurry and use Mr. Big Wig's replacement lock cylinder, TikTok. Oh, sorry. Hurry and use Mr. Big Wig's tick, uh, replacement cylinder, TikTok. You're about to enter Mr. Big Wig's emoscape. Are you ready, TikTok? I forgot how to do the clocky voice yet. I've been doing so many weird cartoony voices. Boy, there we go. I am legally distinct Mickey Mouse. Oh, -ho! there we go. Also, the game said something, but I skipped it. Lore. Oh no. Have fun with Mr. Bigwig. Okay, we can do this. Woof! Incredible. Let's keep playing. Ah, I see. I'm just playing with him. All right, doggo. Listen, I can do this with Rusty. I can do this with a mechanical mean dog. All right. What are we doing here? Wait, wait. Oh, right. There we go. I'm so confused because I thought this was where we were starting at chat. I was like, wait a second, where's the laser? Go. Woof, woof. That was fun. Why do you all go all of a sudden? Oh. I feel so much better. Udo having some company could be such a wonderful thing. Woof. You gotta take me out to play again, okay? Woof, woof. I wanna go play. I wanna go play. Will you intentionally make someone angry again? Woof. I'll be the solo doggo that brings you happiness. Who's oh, smart and nice? I'll be wonderful and won't cause any trouble. Woof. Play with me again sometime, Drinksmith. All right. Well, then what else do we do? Does that just solve it, or do we have to go into the other one's dreamscape, too? Huh. Well, let's talk to him first, see if anything's changed. Woof! Take me out to play again, all right? Be sure to hang out with me again, Drinksmith. Okay. What about here? I I'm innocent. That radio just randomly started blaring out loud noise. I was startled. It slipped. I grasped on the radio loose and then it dropped. <laughs> I'm a victim, too. Besides, it's just a radio. What's the big deal, anyway? If he wants to listen to something, <laughs> I'll give him something to listen to. I can talk about all kinds of stuff. Scary, funny, serious, or even the kind of stuff you can't put on the airwaves. Whoa, now, I'm also quite the expert when it comes to canine jokes. Oh, whoop, I did not apologize. Are you serious? You want me? Is it a passionate kid to bow my head and apologize to that idiot pooch? I feel so wronged. Of course, I know what I've done. I can tell the difference between right and wrong, to be honest with you. I did it on purpose. <laughs> Bring it on. Show me what's what. <laughs> I've been like this since the day I was born. Nobody can deal with me. Maybe I can seize the chance to slip into his internal world and help him change that bad habit of pranking others. All right, let's try it, chat. Who are you? Yeah, okay. Not doing it again, Glocky. Enter the emo space. Alright, so so far, very simple little puzzle, so. Whoa, I love seeing you hate me and not be able to do anything about it. <laughs> oh, this. This guy. Are we going to be doing this on the walls again, chat? Can't put one mess with someone. If you don't do something, I'll get bored. Oh, no. Alright. What's wrong, buddy? I got you! You fell for it! Uh-huh. Can't catch me! I 
I don't think that's the answer. All right, we'll try this first. God, I don't know if this is gonna work yet. Yeah, it doesn't work. Other way is the way then, I guess. this way. I don't know how we're going to be able to get to that other side. Okay, there's nowhere else to go. There we go. I'm right here. Oh, no. Chat, I'm, I'm nervous. Okay, it's nothing. Okay. I think they're just supposed to try to quote-unquote hide it then. Okay, he's just here then. There we go. You got me! I I'm sorry because I, I, I'm not there! <laughs> oh my god. That's how we're gonna play it, huh? Now we go this way. Hey, I'm leaving! Oh, boy. Come on, come on! Okay, there, there's nowhere else for you to go. This is the last puzzle. L let me go! I, I know I was wrong. I'm truly sorry, and I apologize to every dog around the world who has ever been bullied. From this moment on, I will be the protector of all dogs. I'll make sure no dog ever cries, and will do so until the day I die. I... I... You want me to teach you another lesson? I... <laughs> Actually, I didn't really do it on purpose. That wasn't it at all. It, uh, it's just that, well, Shimon hasn't been around recently. I thought maybe uh, if I made a siege, she might come back. Shimon would come rushing back if the monsters were in trouble. I'm sure of it. So that's why uh, I smashed that idiot's pooch's thing. All right. You shouldn't have done that, right? I know, I know. From here on out, I'll be sure to not bother make fun of that idiot pooch. Idiot pooch. Blech. So, see how hard that slap was? It hurt so much, I'll never forget. What if you let me off this time? If this happens again, you'll get slapped ten times. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I've been miraculously revived! I'm a good boy. I'm putting my uninhibited nature behind me. It's all happy days for me here. Everyone likes dice. <laughs> all right. There we go. I hope the tips are good for all this work. I don't know. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Looks like we hit a, uh, a good break point, though. Because they just gave us a bunch of stuff, and we seem to have gone through the first little story thing. Hey, idiot pooch! Uh, idiot pooch? Uh, idiot, 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 idiot pooch! <laughs> I've got quite the mouth. No one can handle this! Woof. You still haven't paid me back for the radio, you broke! Even if this lounge is big, you won't escape! Uh, well, uh, how about this? I'll take you to the hotel room. There's all sorts of stuff in there that guests don't want. <laughs> Until you find something you like. Got a radio that works? You'll find out if you go take a look. I'm off. Better keep up or you'll be eating my dust. Woof! Wait for me! Looks like they've, uh, patched things up. Hey, I'm back, Kalis. How'd it go? Did you like being a drinksmith while I was away? Uh, all my mind can come up with are sad moments. You look pretty cute when you're sad. What problems did you encounter? I'm all ears. 
Sharing is so important. It can double our blessings and cut our burdens in half. The work of a drink smith is all about listening and chatting. So that's what happened. As the collapse of the dreamscape accelerates, the monster's emotions become increasingly unstable. Similar conflicts will only keep growing in number. Who knows? Maybe we'll have a bigger headache to deal with later. But you did great. You're a bona fide drinksmith. Allow me to thank you on their behalf. Is this part of uh is this part of a drinksmith's gig, huh? As a drinksmith at Dream Joe and Whole Story, handling the monster's interpersonal relationship is all part of the job. Did I tell you right when you started? Being a drinksmith here isn't a walk in the park. Will you do something for me? Please make me a drink. You've been a drink smith for so long that you probably figured it out. If a customer's sitting across from you, that means they absolutely trust you. You can't come at this job with a 9-5 mentality. 9 to 5, I should say. I can't wait to see what kind of drink you make me. Alright. This place is called Dream Jolt Holstery because all the guests here are members of the Dream Jolt Troop. You've seen the Sweet Dreams Troop, right? Those billboards that run around the streets, the musical instruments that play automatically, and those surprisingly large eyes? In the dreamscape, objects with self-awareness like that are everywhere. All those monsters used to be part of the Sweet Dreams Troop. Hardworking, well-trained, and obedient to the family, providing amusement and service to the guests. Yeah, they were all good children. Until the nightmare struck and turned them into monsters. The form that you now see, insane and babbling. I don't think they're strange. You're quite a smooth talker. Is this how you trick those children? Oh, don't get me wrong, it's a compliment. Before becoming a drinksmith, I used to be the administrator of the Sweet Dreams Troop. My title might have been their administrator, but I treated them like my own family. That's why it hurts me to see them in this state. So I decided to stay here, hoping that I could help them. Get a bit normal again. That they can regain recognition from the people and have happy lives. But the process was too long. Even with the monster's emotional issues temporarily placated, the nightmares will still return time and time again with no end in sight. And I'm starting to, uh, feel tired. Can't resolve this problem once and for all? Well... Ooh, I'm getting a bit sleepy. That's all for now. I'll tell you more later when a chance arises. I have enough atmosphere to generate inspiration now. Please make me a drink that brings feelings of nostalgia. In an extra large glass, and is slightly sweet. Its taste should be particularly strong. Alright. Customers will sometimes have requests for the beverage's flavor base. To create the flavor base, first prepare the required normal flavor, then give it some stirring. Let's use an extra large glass. Press to proceed. We'll do no ice. Let's start creating the flavor base. Okay, so slightly bitter and mellow, and then stir. Alright. Alright, so that's done. Now in a puffer goat milk. Um... There we go. The flavor base created from stirring won't be influenced by subsequently added ingredients. I'll leave the rest to you. Okay, so this is how you get nostalgic, huh? Now I need to somehow get exactly two. <sighs> Ooh. Okay. And now I need to be very strong. Right? Okay. I mean, I guess we could just accept it as being extra thick. Yeah, let's do it. Because it shouldn't influence anything. Yeah. I think I have this right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with the Intellitron. I don't know, chat. I think I could have done better. I don't think it's got quite the color profile I'm looking for. <laughs> huh. It tastes great. Besides Gallagher, you're the fastest learner I've ever met when it comes to mixing drinks. Are you really not planning on working at this lounge for a long time? Nope. Drinks, whether it tastes great or terrible, reflect your most genuine thoughts at this moment. How you understand the guests before you, and how you intend to respond to their trust. This might seem simple, but it's so much more than that. Oh, there's something else I need to tell you. Even though the family treats the Sweet Dreams Troop as mere props for the guest entertainment, there are quite a few people who take a genuine interest in them. So they even told me about it and become regulars at the lounge. If you're interested, you can also invite your trusted friends here. Uh-huh. 
Is it really okay to tell others about the monsters? Uh, is it the hotel of the dreamscape sealed off by the family? Just tell them you're my guest and the family's guards won't stop you. They're merely obedient bloodhounds following orders. Don't take them too seriously. That's all for now. You must be tired too. Get some rest. The road ahead is long and it'll be tougher than you expect. After solving this issue between Spade and Mr. Bigwig, the two of them will probably get along peacefully at the lounge now, right? Siobhan was once the administrator for the Sweet Dreams troupe. How unexpected. No wonder she has such a soft spot for monsters. New customers are about to arrive. Oh, no. Nope. <laughs> Alright, we're taking a break now, Chet. My voice. My voice. My voice. But hey, people actually show up here now. That's cool. Actual people I can chat with. Um, where do we want to go, chat? Uh, let's actually start here. Oh, important reminder, stay hydrated. There we go. See, this is exactly what I wanted to do, chat. I'm so bored. Nothing I do seems to get me fired up anymore. Oh, hey, you look really cool. You've never seen outfits like that around Petticoni. May I ask where you're from? For a nameless, the whole world is my home. <laughs> oh, that sounds complicated. So what does that mean? Can you tell me more? You give Walter a brief explanation of the Astral Express and what it means to be a nameless. Oh. Hey, that sounds even more amazing than a movie. Then you must have been to many places. You must have had all sorts of dangerous and thrilling experiences. Will you tell me some stories? To repay you, you can come to me anytime there's something about Petticoat you don't fully understand. Uh-huh. Is that so? Ask whatever you like. To say I know a lot about this place is an understatement. I can even tell you how many floor tiles there are in ID Park. Uh, so how many, oh, many tiles are there? Uh, hey, it's a metaphor. You know what a metaphor is, right? Why don't you ask me a more realistic question? Uh-huh. Are there any fun activities you'd recommend? If you've been nearby, my first stop would obviously be ID Park. You have to try the hamster ball race at the Brother Hanu roleplay. Speaking of which, <laughs> that line of three dreamy slots next to the golden capsule machine, if you get a chance, you should go check them out. The furthest golden machine to the left has a lot of, uh, character. Every day it begs and begs people to quit gambling, which has caused a lot of complaints. However, it doesn't matter how many times they reset the machine, the problem never goes away. It's like a bit of an urban legend. As for the other moments, uh, if you like natural scenes, check out the moment of Oasis. If you like talent shows, then go to Moment of Scorched Sand. If you want a romantic affair, then go to Blue Hour. If you want to go shopping, then uh, go to Moment of Dusk. If none of these are exciting enough for you, I suggest heading over to the Moment of Stars. Spheroid, Roboball, Unicycler. They have competitions for everything over there. Uh-huh. Are there any dishes you can recommend? Hmm. So glad's the most popular one. You must have tried that, right? Then I recommend trying Pico White Grape Soda. It may not taste great, but it's got a lot of kick. Grape syrup, on the other hand, uh, I would recommend it. It's too sweet, it makes you really sleepy. As for food, um, if you just want to check out some popular foods, you have to try Clocky Pizza, no cake rolls. Even if you eat those cakes, is a bit like chewing on wood. But if you want to eat something a bit more fitling, I recommend float disc burgers and 100 layer sundaes. Of course, whatever you do, don't order the sugar-free sundae. Uh-huh. Ah, so soon? I still have so much to talk about. Uh-huh. Hmm. He's gone and lost his temper again. Well, that's not the voice I gave him, did I, chat? <laughs> oh, you're here? I hope you have new stories to share with me. He sounds more like, yeah, I hope you have new stories to share with me. Like, no. Let's try it. Angry. Do you know about my swarm brothers? If you don't know, I'll explain anyway. A few days ago, I was wandering around the theme park and went to check out the food trucks by the entrance on a whim. Then I ended up gaining a couple of brothers. Uh, gaining a couple of what? Do brothers come free with the stack? Listen to the rest of my story first. At that moment, I happened to overhear a clocky actor talking to his boss, and would you believe it? Their names are Wolf Bay and Warner. The saying goes, the more W's you get, the better. So we vowed to be brothers in front of the clocky statue. The youngest, Warner, wasn't that bad. He was smart enough and quite eloquent. We got along pretty well. But that Wolf Bay, uh, I heard he used to be a famous athlete across the cosmos. But I just think he's an oaf. I fit I'd take him out for a meal at the clocky diner. 
But where most people take their time and chew slowly, he just rammed it all in his mouth like he was at war with his food. Recently, the Iris family has that young singer who sang Song of Beauty, right? She's pretty popular. Well, I had the great idea of taking them to experience some culture, and what happens? Their wolf by fool falls asleep and is snoring like a bubble hound before she's even sung a few bars. Turns out he's just from some remote minor planet. Not suitable to be seen with in public. I guess that makes sense. If he actually had any skills, why would he retire to become a costume performer? Well, that's, um... That was a story. <laughs> Poor people are still poor even in their dreams because these poor souls have never seen the world. That's, uh, those are some wise words from Boss Stone. No, what do I have to show for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh god. Never knew I could, no, I, I just knew that I could never spend time with the Ozopes. Okay, uh, what about Happy? Oh, how are there people who still believe that you have to work in Pentecone for 70 years to receive the right to permanent residency nonsense? It's ridiculous. Some of these people are actually very intelligent, but when it comes to things like this, all this just completely deserts them. Although, I can understand how these dream chasers feel. This is better, Cody, after all. <laughs> What's more, it doesn't matter how amazing the hotel service is here. Who wouldn't wish to have their own home in Golden Hour, right? Ooh, ID tokens. No! What do I have to show for it? Uh, oh, look at them. They're all desperate to get into this dream. And last one. Sad. They all say how the dreamscape is so amazing that people never want to leave. But after you've stared at it long enough, it's just another slightly more prosperous city. Honestly, I really envy people like you. Completely free, no restraints, going wherever the wind takes you, no burdens or worries. Uh, why be moved when you can get moving? How do you know I haven't got it moving? I already have a whole room full of resources and equipment that might be useful in an adventure, and that's just the beginning. What's more, uh, although I've never left the Osdana star system, I've traveled to a lot of the nearby planets. It's just that none of them have really show allowed me to feel the joy of adventure. They're all just filled with unremarkable buildings, outdated entertainment, and artificial scenery. They can't even measure up to Pentecone. A true adventure needs to be full of twists and turns, thrills and excitement, and allow you to witness the truest universe. Uh, so you want to be a nameless? Um, um... Uh, thank you for the kind offer, but I cannot right now. I can just casually agree to something like that. Interstellar adventures are serious and solemn. I must make flawless preparations, wait for the perfect timing to show how serious I am about this. Ah, he's one of those, chats. One of those. No. What do I have to show for it? Oh, my. Wish I could just run away to an interstellar adventure. Well, let's get you back to normal. Living day after day like this. Oh, I could just die of boredom. I'm not saying that the dream world is bad, it's just... Imagine you drunk Soul Glide your whole life since you were born. That to you, drinking Soul Glide would be no different to just drinking plain old tap water, wouldn't it? Very true. Oh, absorb emotions. Good afternoon, Mr. White Man. As representative of the family, I'd like to extend a sincere invitation to join us. Our members have decided to open their arms to you. You're an outstanding designer. I'm sure that you would have much to discuss with the Nightingale family members. What's more, there has been a rise in trifling affairs in the dreamscape of late, and we require dreamweavers to assist in maintaining this beautiful dream. I imagine I have no right to refuse, correct? You have the right to refuse, but it would be extremely regretful should that be your decision. Uh. I need to consider this offer first. Of course, I shall be here waiting your answer. Guy's not happy about it, huh? So, uh, are we buds now or what? Huh, maybe not yet. Ask me later during a show or something. Oh, but we. How about we wait for the Urchin Star Hunters to perform again and speak then? Maybe I'll think you're my friend when there's a bit more light and noise. Oh, oh. Okay. Wow, chat, stringing him along. I recently uh, started replaying Shadow of the Colossus. It's very good. You did finish it, if I remember. Uh, yeah, I finished it. I enjoyed it. It wasn't my favorite game, right? But I see why a lot of people really love it. There's definitely um, a lot of charm to it. I really enjoyed the remake, uh, too, in terms of like just the graphics and stuff, like going through those environments and just kind of experiencing it all. It's definitely one of those games that if you ever just kind of want to, like, you know, roam around randomly, you could definitely do that. It just, it just looks really nice. Boss, the actors are on strike again. 
Wait, what? <laughs> They're striking again. Anything here? Oh my god. Absorb emotions. It's finally here. Our long-held wish has come true. It's been half an amber era, but we finally saved enough to come and chase our dreams. Aren't you happy too, my love? It's just a shame that with my old age, I may not be able to come here with you again. At least this time I'll indulge it to my heart's content and leave no regrets. The Intellitron by the old lady's side remained silent, though, th through this whole exchange. Perhaps he cannot comprehend this kind of sorrow, or perhaps he cannot find the words to comfort her and has nothing but silence to offer. Aww. An old lady and her robot lover, huh? Even though I'm harsh on the Demon Souls remake, they did a really good job with the Shadow of the Colossus. I've heard similar complaints about the art style in the Shadow of the Colossus after I finished playing, but I haven't looked into it too much, so I don't know how valid they are. It may be true, but at the very least, I think we can both agree that graphically, both Shadow of Colossus and the Demon Souls remake are phenomenal. The question is always the art style. Alright. How long has it been? Where is he? There's no sign of him anywhere! Huh. Uh, maybe he has something he needs to do. Uh, why don't we wait a little longer? Wait, wait, wait. Is that all you ever say? Ever since we started to go to movies with him, I miss the opening credits every time. I've been waiting for ages. Oh. Where is everyone? Uh-huh. Hey, Clocky. Welcome to Dreamville, Tick Tock. Dear friend, Clocky is here to serve you today, Tick Tock. Uh, serve me, but no one else can see you. Tick Tock can't, can't see me. This, oh dear, my friend, how did you know? I thought that Mr. Soda's invisibility mid Soda was a special secret just for me. My kind friend, you won't tell the evil boss Stone about Clocky's secret weapon, will you? I'm happy to see you, my dear friend, Tick Tock. I hope you have a wonderful time in Dreamville, Tick Tock. Aw, uh, wait, I can activate clockwork on... I'm not ready for the clocky voice right now. <laughs> I'm not ready, chat. Absorb emotions. He's so calm and reliable, so strong and handsome. No enemy could stand against his sharp claws and ferocious fangs. Wait, what kind of nonsense has got you hooked this time? Don't speak about him like that. He's perfect. Fine. So this man you've fallen for is... Of course, it's the greatest and mesmerizing Hanus. Character stand! Uh, uh. What is that reaction? This is a dream, you know? If a pile of presents can talk, then why can't a dreamy slots machine fall in love with a character stand? Save your voice, Loki. It's for your own good. Yep, I'm doing that. <laughs> also, happy gear. Yay! My friend, have we met before? Are we... Are we sure that that's not the situation I should be stepping into? Investing here is like a bet you can't lose. Uh huh. Sure. <laughs> What's this? More more emotions. Welcome to the Clock Studios theme park. We hope you enjoy a wonderful day here. The three themed areas stand independently of each other. If you want to scoop between each, you'll have to use a bubble pinball. Is that it? Okay, nothing else special, I see. You know what, chat? <laughs> I don't need more cartoony things to be voicing, so... We're gonna go a place where the cartoon stuff is not here. Oh, I'm missing a, uh, a chest here. Shit, what? Where's my terrible memory? I just went through and organized this again last week and it's already slipped my mind. I don't even know if eating brains helps with memory in a dream. Wait, what? Wait, what? Ah, don't worry, I've been keeping track of everything. What? Hello, Kana. Oh no, Chet. Leo. <laughs> Kafka, I am very disappointed in you. <laughs> there we go. Nope. <laughs> nope. So 
know, just how much longer do we have to wait? It's almost been two hours. It must be our turn soon. Don't you know time is money? Huh? Don't calculate by the minute. I've already lost 21,864 alfalfa credits. God, jeez, kid. Oh, sorry, not kid. I'm praying for that day when they start adding um, Mimic Chest to turn-based RPGs. Somewhere before. They actually ha already have Mimic enemies in this game, so, I mean, it's possible. We're seeing a lot more VIPs than usual today. Totally possible. <laughs> Do I talk to the Usher or the Confessor? Confessor sounds like it's a mistake, so obviously we have to do that one. Also, Fate's Atlas. I have to check this now, chat. We still don't have side quests here. That's so weird to me. That's super weird to me that we don't have any side quests. We're seeing a lot more VIPs than usual today. Oh, yeah, lots of people to talk to. Hello, Dream Chaser. My name is Kona, a confessor of Dewlight Pavilion. I might not be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the bronze melodia of the Oak family, but I'm more than willing to be Shipe's representative to listen to you and forgive all your sins, oh god. If you have any guilt you carry, then speak. It's a cultist. Her expression is beautiful but aloof, as if she's keeping everyone at arm's length. You simply cannot muster your courage to tell her your sins. That is, if you actually had any. Will you listen to my confession? Of course. Speak freely. I will gladly receive them all. I have sins to confess. Then please, elaborate on your previous indiscretion and display your willingness to replant. I regularly make life difficult for trash cans. I have an unfathomable love for trash cans, having fondled them all across many different worlds. I also stole plenty of valuables from inside them. I also once hit a trash can that had arms and legs, thrashing their leader thoroughly and flipping it upside down. Even now, there are trash cans that bear great hostility towards me. I hereby confess to you, so please forgive my sins. Uh... As long as your heart is devoted and you vow never to commit these crimes again, the Great One will grant you forgiveness on account of you recognizing how misguided you were. When you return, you must remember to treat your companions earnestly, to spread kindness to strangers. Then you can atone for your mistakes. Uh... Th the process is complete. I have to say, your experiences, uh... do paint you in a new light. <laughs> Cultists are saviors. Yep, don't worry. I've employed clandestine means for rewards. Oh, no. I can't control my own hands, regularly attacking all kinds of containers and vessels along my path, smashing them to smithereens. Every new place I'm at, I'll scour the area for chests and plunder all the valuables in them, even if they don't belong to me. I hereby confess to you, so please forgive my sins. God, every RPG player ever. The Great One on Magdala, no. Ah... Uh. As long as your heart, you vow to commit, the great one will grant you blah 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 blah. Recognize how this guy, when you return to commit, blah blah blah. blah. Okay. We'll do one last one. I have consumed the praise of high morals. Many times I gave in to my evil thoughts, performing deeds that were immoral, including but not limited to altering messages, sending back homework, salvaging coins from fountains. It was only because I had the praise of high morals that I could do all these. I hereby confess to you. To please forgive my sins. Uh. <laughs> it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the game lets you actually just confess to doing terrible RPG things with awful moral implications when divorced from the fact that this is a game. What about the unborn orphan? Uh, do we have any unborn orphans in this game? Actually, no. You know what? This game needs an unborn orphan. Get on that, Hoyo. Can you really get Shipei to forgive me? Truthfully, I cannot plead with them to stoop down to our level, but I am willing to listen to your words. Most people's mistakes are but trivial and do not warrant the Great One's personal forgiveness. They mostly just lack a listening ear. And many times, ceremony is also an essential part of it. If nothing else, at least I can forgive you on behalf of myself. Uh, what's your take on dreams? Dreams? I personally have no qualms against them, but one can't avoid the effects of certain negative emotions after listening to so many confessions. Even within the family, there are many who bear resentment towards the chaos in the dreams, and this problem won't be resolved anytime soon. Some say that this madness was caused by the family's neglect, but we can't meet punishment that is too severe on the guests. The worst we could do is to prevent them from entering the dreams again. But what other better solution is there? Are we to sacrifice our goal of pursuing happiness and harmony, all for the so-called peace? I don't think it was a good idea. 
there should be no suppression in Pentagoni's dreams. If we had to use extreme methods to regulate guests, I'd rather this place remain forever chaotic. I've got nothing to confess anymore. All right, I'll be right here, waiting for to listen to your heart's voice. Welcome to Dulight Pavilion. Dreams, Hunter's Nightmare, yeah. We already have dreams. We have nightmares. I think we're pretty good there. I mean, technically, we're a hunter, too. Uh, Come, Lost Lamb. Open your heart to me. All right. She's very happy. Let's make her sad. <sighs> I'm ultimately not a true bronze melodia, and I'm unable to fulfill the assuage all the burdens of those who confess. The last time someone came for confession, he said he was obsessed with the dreamscape, running amok inside for months. Only when he returned to reality did he discover that his own foster mother at home, far away from him, had passed away from illness, and he had missed the chance to see her for the last time. He was both upset and remorseful, almost to the point where he lost the courage to live. Yet I couldn't do anything more for him, apart from empty words of comfort. I've seen many such incidents, compared to sorrow, my heart, my heart is more tired. Perhaps this dream was able to take shape because it could sever all pains and worries irrelevant to the dream. Well, who would have guessed that such anguish would not just disappear into thin air? Huh. Broken dreams. Conclusion of the third round of inspection failed. Move this building two meters to the right. The bar's design should be more refined. The sign should be enlarged a little. Welcome to Dewlight Pavilion. Ultimately, I'm not true bronze melodia. I'm not able to fully assuage all the burdens of those who confess. Alright. Angry. An angry frown streaks across Kona's face. Her forehead scrunched up into wrinkly folds. That's the default reaction of someone obsessed with cleanliness who sees trash strewn all about. Is the heartlessness of humanity truly capable of such atrocity? It simply makes me nauseous! What happened? I remind you of a penitent who sought my comfort of his conscience, but what he did was clearly unconscionable. unconscionable. The family's invites were sent all over the world, and their judgment was keen sighted. All who received them were worthy, but this patient's morals and talents were both lacking, which is why he did not receive one. Who knew envy would take over his mind, intercepting and killing a guest on the way, then stealing the victim's invitation? I summoned the bloodhound instantly to arrest him and exiled him from the dreamscape forever. After his capture, he was remorseless about his vile act. He even cursed me for being someone who had forsaken my professional oath. What a joke. He was the one who forsook the dream first, the moment he chose violence. Ooh, moment of betrayal. Welcome to Dewlight Pavilion. Violence is a betrayal of dreams. All right, just calm down, lady. Kana's emotion has been tuned to calm. After a momentary shock, Kana's face reverts to her usual solemnity, with not a sliver of emotion on it. Are you here for a confession? Please do not loiter if you aren't. There are people waiting behind you. Oh. Anything I can do for you today? Uh-huh. In theory, you have the right to give her a confession, but your frosty visage quashes... Oh, no, but her frosty visage quashes any such notions. Let's come back when she's in a better mood. Uh-huh. Anything I can do for you today? Let's bring her back to happy. A smile flashes across Kana's lips. She initially tries to hide it, but can't help it nonetheless. Psh! Model attendant of the year. Like it's some sort of grand award. You've won an award? Yes, perhaps the head of the family should confirm me with a medal with I'm the role model of the year engraved on it. At least there'd be some sense of ceremony to it. Do you know how this prize is decided? Every family member will be sent a donut doused in cream to be thrown at the person they wish to recommend. Whoever gets most covered in cream will be the model employee of the year. What a pretentious farce. But since everyone thinks so highly of me, I have to reciprocate in kind. Come, fling donuts at me to your heart's content. Er, er, I mean, confess to me of your heart to your heart's content. At least she still has a sense of humor. Or maybe she's just somewhat uncomfortable with new people. Hmm. Learn something new every day. Nope. Leo, Hello, Hendrick. Guest. Oh boy. Brina. Float disc burgers, oat cake rolls, Mr. Herring's lemon tarts. Ugh, I can't choose. What should I have for dinner tonight? Why not have clocky pizza? Eek! Um, <clears throat> hello, dear guest. Welcome to the Dulight Pavilion. Which member of the family did you schedule a visit with? Uh, schedule a meeting with a member of the family? How should I respond? Make up a meeting. 
prepare. Think of a way to fool my way through. Um, I'm here to see. Oh my God! No one's gonna know who Gallagher is. That's the best one. Oh God! Yes, I'm here to see Gallagher. Uh, Mr. Gallagher. Guess asking to see Mr. Gallagher are rather rare. Oh my God! She actually knows who he is. I can only apologize for my rudeness before. Uh, 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 before it. What? Before? Uh, actually, I actually am curious what exactly that's supposed to mean. Before a uh, what? Yep. Does it make sense? Wait, this sounds so wrong. Wait, what What sounds so wrong? She won the Dreams doll so that she could do whatever- Oh my god, I that does sound wrong. Don't do that. Uh, I can only apologize for my rudeness before a- uh, uh, As a VIP guest of the family, please enter, so I'll be alone to greet you shortly. Of course, if you have any issues, please feel free to come to me. I hope you have a pleasant time. Uh-huh. There's some things I'm confused about. Is there anything else I can help you with? Where's this place? Unlike the majority of other districts in Pentagoni, the moment of morning dew is not open to outsiders. It is fundamentally reserved for use by members of the family and a select number of VIP guests. Please rest assured that any conversations held within Dew Light Pavilion will be protected by the family and will be kept completely confidential. Uh-huh. Hey, Mikazuki! Welcome back! Uh, Firefly in the story, she said she had disease, right? Bruh, even the JPV also has a congenital disease. Oh, really? That really sucks. I'm sure that that really informed her acting, though. Firefly of the story said she has a disease, right? Yeah. Um, entropy loss syndrome. It's a made-up disease as far as I'm aware, but... Yeah. Uh, I feel like security here is extremely strict. Uh, that's correct. Aside from the family members with dream access, only VIP guests such as yourself have been directly invited to know how to reach the Dewlight Pavilion. So, you could go as far as to say that this is the safest area in all of Pentacony. Those that would try to infiltrate this place would have a hard time slipping, uh, simply trying to find a way in. What's more, there are many more security measures inside the pavilion itself. You can rest completely assured. Uh, what's your take on dreams? Oh my, I've never had a guest ask me a question like that. Uh, let me think. For the majority of people, this wonderful dream would be an absolute paradise. However, having grown up here, even those breathtaking sights can grow dull and monotonous. Sometimes I wish to visit the world outside Pentagoni and see the starry sky of reality. I'm sure you've laid eyes of the cosmos of which I speak. Um, nothing, nothing else to say. Very well, I wish you a safe dream. Uh, uh, I mean, a joyous dream. Welcome to Dewlight Pavilion. Uh, honestly, pretty accurate what I got here. Uh, float disc burgers, oat cake rolls, Mr. Herring's lemon tarts. Uh, what should I have for dinner tonight? Angry. I worked so hard to get myself into this nice, stable, leisurely position. Then I found out they want to reassign me to shifts in the moment of serenity. I hear that all the most terrifying convicts are out there. I heard there's an Intellitron that impersonates a teddy bear, a homeless man that calls themselves an emperor. I heard they even brought in a weird billboard. This list just gets weirder and weirder. Well, that's what they all say. I heard the person working there before me even met a talking trash can. Well, I, I, I've met those everywhere. Uh, what a horrible life it would be. Oh, Tomori-san has a disease in her bones, which makes her have to stop all her idle activities. Well, at least she's got a, got a future in voice acting, but yeah, that sucks. <sighs> Welcome to Dewlight Pavilion. Is it like brittle bone disease or something else, I wonder? Oh, well, I'm sure they keep it private for her personal privacy anyway. Uh, you tell me, how could such a thing happen? All right. Happy! It's been a while since I met a kind guest willing to talk with me. Did you know that even the Dewlight Pavilion contains mysterious, unexplained riddles? Brina, the chatterbox, talks your ear off for quite some time. She talks about the mysterious passages in the building, the hidden door in the treasury, and the terrifying ghosts that roam within the structure every day. You're forced to listen to loads of secret gossip that you cannot share with anyone. Let's hope that the people implicated in these stories don't come to find you and settle the score later. Heh, <laughs> it's been so long since I've been able to chat with it to my heart's content like this. Although, these rumors I've told you, you have to keep them a secret. Conclusion of the eighth round of inspection failed. Oh my god, there are so many inspections here, huh? Reason, Mr. O.D. Alfalfa expressed his dissatisfaction with the texture of the relief. After the meeting, he needs to contact the Dreamweaver team for fine-tuning. Anything I can do for you today? <laughs> uh, you did not sound that happy, to be honest, though. See ya. The pavilion rarely has visitors. 
so this job offers a lot of leisure time. But sometimes it can be unbearable. I'm working here alone, after all. There's barely anyone to talk to. When we do get the odd visitor, they're all extremely rich and important figures. Why would any of them want to talk to a lonely usher? Ah, I used to just the cost of having a leisurely job. Uh-huh. Anything I can do for you today? Alas. Let's make you happy again, girl. Back to calm. Work at the pavilion is so easy. All I think about while I'm at work is, what should I have for dinner tonight? Ah, Frina, you must not let yourself slack off like this. Pay attention to your work. Uh, hmm. Maybe I will have a clocky pizza for dinner tonight. Well. Can't go wrong, right? Head of security here, huh? Welcome, esteemed guest. How did Hendrick sound like... Uh, like, I am totally here for you with my made-up bullshit, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how Hendrix sounded. Uh, let's try Elio first, though. Uh, sorry, but I don't like to chat during work hours. Uh, mind if we have a little chat? Since you're up for it, let's do it. Well, uh, <laughs> that was a quick turnaround. How do you feel about your job? My job here, frankly speaking, is the most interesting thing. Mr. McCoy is stringent about the security of Doolite Pavilion. My job is to convey Mr. McCoy's instructions to the Bloodhound guys. No one has ever succeeded in breaking into this place, so we just patrol the place every day and occasionally assist in entertaining the guests. Uh, that's a pretty uneventful routine. Still, it means things are peaceful in the dreamscape, isn't it? What are your thoughts on dreams? Oh, dreams? No one in the family would deny its importance, but it isn't the only thing that matters in life. Just take me as an example. When I'm not working, I'll return to reality to spend time with my family and pets. I have dozens of animals at home. You should meet Miss Topaz. I have no idea who that is, but I bet she must be a pet lover too. <laughs> Most of my pets used to be stray animals. I only had a couple of them in the beginning, and they got more and more as time went on. I've never regretted doing this or found it a nuisance. After all, someone has to deal with the issues in the real world at the end of the day, right? What's your take on the Sweet Dreams troop? Oh, Sweet Dreams Troop. They're all lovely and sweet bunch. I like them. Although they are dreamscape, dreamscape, uh, dreamscape creations. They're just as good as us humans when it comes to serving the guests. They're quite reliable assistants. Unfortunately, it's inevitable to get frustrated while handling the guests. It's unfortunate that some Sweet Dreams Troops are corroded as a result and are reduced to um, something less sweet. If one day people in the dreamscape could be rid of their negative emotions, the troop could probably stay pure all the time. That'd be a beautiful dream in the truest sense. Black Swan is cute. She is sexy, that's for sure. Sexy, sexy swan. Huh? Looking for me? Hello there, if you have anything to get off your chest, I'm all ears. I was actually surprisingly accurate with that voice. Sad. Dreams. What should it feel sad in a dream? Well, I just can't help feeling pessimistic sometimes. There's no doubt we need dreams. The Golden Hour is the city of dreams where people who desire beauty will visit. Nevertheless, the expansion of dreams is approaching its limits, and all the nice things will eventually come to exhaustion. Petticoni is akin to a bubble that's bound to burst if it continues to grow bigger. There might come a day when the entire universe gets sick of the dreamscape as well as the illusions that come with it. When the time comes, what can people like us do? The only good thing is that such a day won't be happening in the near future. 11th round of inspection. How many rounds are there? Reason Mr. Sunday vetoed the proposal to use fallen leaves instead of feathers for the visual effect iteration, requiring a reiteration of the plan. He's like, no, we have to use feathers. <clears throat> you looking for me? <laughs> Dreams of what day face their end. I take him calm, calm him down. My apologies. This behavior was out of line. I'm not usually like that. I don't like to reveal my emotion in public as it will affect my work. This time, uh, this is an accident. It won't happen again. Uh-huh. Hmm? Looking for me? Leo wears a frosty expression. He isn't uttering a word, and no one dares to talk to him. Angry? <clears throat> Danger to look everywhere outside the family. Are the IPC here to attack us? Has the dreamscape been invaded by monsters? No, I just recalled something embarrassing that happened to me. There are always some dream chasers who never fail to get under my skin. There was a time I went out to buy something in the golden hour. I bumped into a dream chaser who worked as a salesman along the way. 
He claimed to own an ether cartridge from Punk Lord and was eager to sell it to me for just 50,000 credits. I only brought alfalfa credits with me at that time, so I had to borrow from some of my family to afford it. In the end, I came across another cartridge that looked exactly the same as the Inner Astral Network as the one I bought. It was just a regular cartridge worth less than 500 credits. That was an outright scam. Can people nowadays still be trusted? May the Great One punish the merchants who disrupt harmony. Much to my dismay, the family all ousted the guy for the dreamscape without any heavy sentences. That's unacceptable! Ooh, well, well, he really feels huh? strong about that. Looking for me? Uh-huh. The world beyond do like pavilion is full of lies and deception! Oh, boy, um... Okay, buddy, let's put you back to happy. Several different emotions flicker across Leo's face in a short time. In the end, he breaks into a faint smile as if he's just woken up from a dream. Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I missed? It just dawned on me how per- Oh, uh, sorry. It just dawned on me how perfect my job actually was. I don't have to run errands in different places. It's not too tiring, and I still have time to take care of my dogs after work. Come to think of it, I've been too rigid all this while. I should be enjoying such a wonderful life with a smile. Perhaps it's time I get rid of this poker face. From now on, I must treat everyone around me with warmth. Let's start with you. This emotion is a gift for you. I've kept it for a very long time. Hmm. And then there's Hendrick. Good old Hendrick. So let's see. Uh, Welcome, let's look for the chest now. I think I've I think I've I think I've done enough voice acting for the moment. Uh, you ain't got the origami. Oh, right, this one. Is that Kaled? No, it's not Kaled. Just because it's red doesn't make it Kaled. How am I supposed to yank out that bird? I remember finding it over. I know where it is. I just don't know how to get rid of it. It needs like, oh no, you know what? I bet I have to talk to that stupid wine. That's probably what it is. Oh wait, what do I have here? Limited re time rewards? What? I forgot, chat, they've got rewards for us. That's so nice. We have so much more to do, though. Like, oh, my God. I have a lot. I have a lot to get through, chat. Now, we have a month to do this, so that's fine. But you know how it is. Uh, what's this? Dear guest, you have completed nine challenges in Haru's adventure and outperformed 99.99% of other players. Uh... I never failed to first. Wait, 99.99% already? Hold up, I just finished a few levels. I'm already beating 99.9% .9 of players. Yeah, the entrance of this game is intentionally hidden to provide players with a sense of surprise, and this results in a low participation rate. By the way, we've received feedback from guests that more and more unusual content has appeared in the Hano's Adventure storybooks. As far as we know, the Bloodhound family has initiated an investigation, and this might cause inconvenience for the owners of these books. If you come across any such issues, we kindly request you destroy those erratic storybooks, signal jamming detected. But hey, if you're cool and brave enough to chase the truth despite the risk, remember his story. Uh, what? What do you mean? Signal restored. Are you still there, dear guest? Anyway, there will be more levels in Hanu's adventure for you to discover in the future. Keep up the excellent work and become the best brother Hanu. That's not the Discord server. <laughs> but wait. Yes, yeah, so that's where we got the books from the Hanu's Adventure thing, right? Yeah. Huh. Someone, someone's interfering. Oh, that's creepy, chat. Oh, that's creepy. How am I doing on Pentaconi books, by the way? Honestly, not that bad. We're just missing these five, and we're, we're maxed out. Where's the Brother Hanu stuff? That's collectible cards. We've seen these, yeah. With the different figures we haven't met yet. 
Besides Robin, of course. Ah, here it is, Hanu's Adventure. A limited edition cartoon storybook released by Clock Studios, narrating a tale where Hanu shrinks in size in Satan's Dreamville. The book includes occasional peculiar dialogue interspersed throughout. Oh. Oh, missing all the lore? Oh. Okay, we're gonna do this right now then, chat. Okay, here we go. Preface. This story belongs to the coolest guy in the clocky cartoon. He's full of sharp wit, sticks to his morals, tenacious and brave, undaunted by dangers, often helping his friends out of bad situations, and has thwarted Boss Stone's plots countless times. He's Clocky's most trustworthy comrade, the baddie's most feared opponent, the beloved great hero of Dreamville, Brother Hanu. Always garbed in a stylish coat, with a suave dress hat over his head, and shades to conceal his piercing gaze, he patrols Dreamville and wordlessly. He's more composed than the erudite Professor Owl, more decisive than the revered Old Man Wood, and more popular than the flamboyant Miss Note. I'm gonna take a quick uh, water break right now, because I need some H2O. Chat, stay hydrated. This is similar to the book you find in Trails of Cold Steel. Yeah, for sure. There we go. 22 crocodiles came this time, all bringing their heavy tails with them. In the previous story, Brother Hanu defeated the Buzzflies, plaguing Dreamville, but the despicable Boss Stone capitalized on this chaos and stole the shrinking machine that Professor Owl invented. Is this newly arisen threat that Dreamville faces? Brother Hanu has been turned into Mini Hanu by the shrinking machine and can't defeat Boss Stone with his once mighty strength. <laughs> Are you riding out personally? But don't underestimate Brother Hanu's wit. This suave, silent lad isn't just some savage musclehead. This time, he's going to be just like his old friend, Clocky. Even if burdened by his miniature physique, he'll use his brains and guile to defeat Boss Stone, wrest back Dreamville from the villain, and return it to everyone. A very cool... Oh, you always so dashing. Let's say, oh, you always so dashing. At least the chapter's not 20 pages long. Well, so far, we have quite a few, so we'll have to see how this goes as the as the updates continue because if they if they added um new chapters with the 2.1 update then 2.2 and 2.3 might add even more this story below oh, no that's preface so um chapter one once the buzz, buzz flies left dreamville this haven once again regained its joy and laughter one fine day clocky was once again at the plaza pulling off his usual pranks ah clocky you mischievous brat chirp i'm gonna get you this time whoopsie chad i, I burped whoopsie <laughs> that was unexpected uh, the angry red bird pursued Clocky relentlessly, pecking away at him at every chance. It was the origami bird with the worst temper. Clocky really got under its feathers this time. Tick tock! Boss Red, please stop him! All I did was give Professor Owl's statue a makeover! I'm sure he won't mind. Nonsense! Of course he will! They must never be allowed to enter... <laughs> this is the home that we've toiled away for, spending untold blood, sweat, and tears to build. It's just as Clocky said. Professor Owl's statue was an atrocious mess of colors, especially the dial on his face. Both hands looked like they, he had grown an extra needle-thin whiskers, a truly comical sight. <coughs> Clocky, Professor Owl is the origami bird's teacher and a patron of the foundation of our Dreamville. You must not offend him. Old Man Wood, the person who liked to lecture the most in town, hobbled over with branch cane in hand. Following behind him was the super cool Brother Hanu. <coughs> Brother Hanu, you say something to him as well, old, the old man would said. <clears throat> Brother Hanu emitted an aloof sound with that perennially cool demeanor of his. Abandon our plan to lure the enemy deep into our lines, but the difference between our forces is... But this hump made both Clocky and Boss Red instantly cease their bickering. Tick tock, sorry, I'll clean up the statue right now. The minute hand on Clocky's dial drooped and he lowered his clock face. In the eyes of Clocky, Brother Hanu wasn't just his bestie, but also his arch nemesis. He would never want to cross this stone-cold deadpan wolf. I understand, but you have to come back safe. <laughs> we'll be the same without you. Brother Hanu nodded in approval as he watched Clocky remove the clock hands from the statue as instructed. He turned away to leave the plaza, disappearing into the shadows of an alley alone. To him, clothing the town's dispute is, but a, disputes is but a trifle. The real trouble lies with evildoers who would threaten the town's peace. They would not be so easily deterred with a simple grunt. And so, Brother Hanu must be on high alert every single day, scouring every nook and cranny in Dreamville to eliminate the evils that lurk in dark corners. But it is this very meticulousness that allowed Boss Stone to swoop in. A competent grunt. <clears throat> okay. So we have to remember that Hanu is based on Hanunu, who was the leader of the rebels of the he was the leader of the prisoners that rebelled against the IPC when Penacone was a penal colony. That's right. 
So what, it was a frontier prison? <sighs> Clocky's the watchmaker. I still don't know who Old Man Wood would be. Um, the bird is also a bit confusing to me. Boss Red, I don't know who that would be either. Someone should unalive Clocky. Why? Clocky's Clocky. Hanu stumbled across a peculiar television in the corner of a street in Dreamville. Hanu sized up the television suspiciously. His intuition told him that it must belong to the origami birds and Professor Owl, the only candidate who would tinker with such a complicated machine. Compared to watching TV, the other townspeople prefer enjoying Miss Note's performance at the theater. Hanu decided to return the television to Professor Owl after some consideration. However, a strange wave of electricity surged through his body the moment he touched the television. He realized that something was terribly wrong. It was all too late. Following a sinister and boorish laughter, the scenery before Hanu started to distort. Ha 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 ha! Hanu, you took the bait! I knew you couldn't stop yourself from touching that thing! <laughs> All the crocodiles will be swimming your way! Stop going any further! This is a trap! When Hanu's vision cleared up, he noticed that the sky had suddenly turned overcast. The sun that was shining brightly moments before was nowhere to be seen. Wait a minute. Something is covering the sun! He looked up and finds himself coming face to face with a gaping mouth. It belongs to the greatest nemesis of Dreamville, Boss Stone. Boss Stone is very tall indeed, but he's never been so huge that he could easily crush Hanu with his foot. Boss Stone, with his mouth wide open, lunged at Hanu, but Hanu was agile enough to dodge the sneak attack with a roll. With a groan, Boss Stone fell to the ground, thunderous sounds of explosions and collisions. <gasps> Despicable Hanu! Just you wait! Hanu ran off without turning back. Even though he was ag as agile as a wolf, he still found himself bewildered by the situation. How come Boston had become so enormous? Why did the surroundings look so foreign to him? Could he be still inside the trap set by Boston? What on earth is going on? An agonizing grunt. Hanu soon discovered the truth. Boston didn't become bigger. It was he who had dwindled in size. This did not bode well. Given that Hanu had always relied on his strength to overcome Boston, now they had turned so small and couldn't even carry the launcher of the Hanu missile, how was he supposed to handle Boss Stone? While Hanu was still struggling to comprehend the situation, Boss Stone kicked off his evil scheme. All houses were made of precious gems in Dreamville, and are therefore treasures desired by Boss Stone. With his underling little crocodiles, he bars into Dreamville brazenly and started demolishing the houses of the residents. Without Hanu's protection, the vulnerable residents could only cower in corners. The origami birds that built those houses gathered on the paper tree and started chirping at Boss Stone in protest. All these scoundrels are planning to land via the residential area! There's no way to open fire at all! <laughs> Make as much uh, sorry. <laughs> Make me as much noise as you want! Hanu won't come to your rescue anymore! All the gems in Dreamville will be mine! Boss Stone laughed like a maniac, watching Dreamville turn into a wreck. This had been his most successful raid against Dreamville since he had set his eyes on the town. The stocky crocodile strutted around with his belly sticking out like a victorious general. When he walked past the plaza, he immediately caught sight of Professor Owl's statue. Listen up! This silly bird statue is made of premium material! Bring the whole thing back! I'm gonna turn into a statue of myself! <laughs> Just as the small crocodiles were ready to make a move on the statue, an unexpected figure emerged to block their way. Tick tock! Stop it, jerks! Brace yourself for my clockwork! It was Clocky! Clocky would never allow anyone else to wreak havoc in Dreamville. He alone was the only troublemaker in town. Loki's lore and Alice of H's are when never. Um. Clocky tried moving his minute hands with his finger to launch his clockwork. Everything in Dreamville could turn, could come under the control of his dial. It could even alter everyone's thoughts and turn back time. Thanks to this magical power, Clocky became the people's savior, just like Hanu. Nevertheless, Hanu is still the protagonist of this story. Before Clocky could move his minute hand, the small crocodiles working for Boss Stone beat him to it by pouring a bucket of odd liquid all over his head. Tick tock! What's wrong? Why can't I move it? Clocky's body became sticky and his minute hand was stuck to the dial. Indeed, I'm still no match for you when it comes to commanding a battle. Please stay safe. Ha ha, Clocky. This super adhesive glue is specially prepared for you. You can stay here and be the new statue. Tick tock. As the glue dried up, poor Clocky was stuck to the ground of the plaza. The residents, in hiding, were panic-stricken and could only pin their hopes on the still absent Hanu. Where exactly was Hanu now? Hold on, I think I heard him just now. A low grunt.
if we take all of this as a metaphor for the rebellion against the IPC, it's hard to say how much of this is still true, but there seems to be a deliberate point being made about how Hanu plays such a huge role despite the Watchmaker's abilities. And that the Watchmaker alone couldn't handle the IPC. Still need the prisoner's help. Okay, I'm starting to feel bad for Clocky, yeah. Clocky's, Clocky's just the lovable mascot of Dreamville, trying to make sure that he's the innocent little prankster. Alright, chapter four. Boss Stone had occupied Dreamville and taken over Old Man Wood's mansion. His room was filled to the brim with looted gems. Dreamville shall be called Stoneville in the future! Wait, that name isn't grand enough. It should be Stone Empire instead. Ha 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 ha. Boston was drooling from his ravenous mouth, so carried away by the rosy picture he painted of the future that he had forgotten about a problem he had yet to solve. Meanwhile, on the border of Dreamville, the hard-working Professor Owl was still engrossed in designing new buildings for the town. Unaware that his past works were being destroyed by Boss Stone, he was leisurely searching for stones suitable to construct houses. <laughs> How are you doing? I knew you wouldn't go down with that hunk of repurposed spheroid trash. Suddenly, Professor Owl came across a moving stone. It piqued his curiosity and had never seen a stone that could move on its own in his long years of living. He quickly flew over, picked up the stone with his beak, and was surprised by its soft and fluffy texture. As it turned out, it was Hanu. Professor Owl immediately put Hanu down and asked in a puzzled voice, Goku, how did you turn so small, Hanu? You're even smaller than my students. Hanu let out a resigned grunt. Professor Owl quickly put two and two together and figured out everything. He lost the shrinking machine he invented during the invasion of the old Buzzflies. Note, this story is part of the Clocky and Old Buzzflies animated series. The relevant Dream Bubble episode are available for purchase in all major dreamscapes. <laughs> and it might have fallen into the wrong hands, leading to Hanu's transformation. You're pretty lucky you have crashed into the enemy's main ship. But I don't think you're fit to fight anymore, judging from your injuries. Coco, only a shrinking machine could change you back. If Boss Stone has it, you'll be in hot water. Everyone, uh, even someone as smart as Professor Owl was at his wit's end. However, Hanu didn't see it as an insurmountable problem. If getting back to his original size was the only way to rescue Dreamville, then he'd do everything he could to achieve that. If he must defeat Boss Stone in the process, then he would give it his all to achieve it with his petite body. Seeing Hanu's determined eyes behind his sunglasses, Professor Owl knew that Hanu had made up his mind. Wait, is he going to execute the plan inside a crocodile's appetite? Men like he's injured? This is outrageous! But then again, he's right. We have no other options left. I've got it, Coco! Your courage is impressive. You're truly the hero of Dreamville, Coco! Professor Owl had decided to help Hanu defeat Boss Stone. First, he sent the origami birds to investigate Boss Stone's location. Then he had the birds set up various mechanisms that could give Hanu a bo boost. With everything, when everything was all set, Professor Owl picked up Hanu again. Professor Owl, as well as all the origami birds, believed that this light and diminutive figure would rescue Dreamville. Let's go! I'll help you defeat Boss Stone! Go, go! Hanu nodded and flew in the direction of Dreamville with the flock of birds. I've got it. I'll count on you to carry everyone's dreams once again. A firm grunt. Uh, let's see. Part two. Okay, so this is the part that the new thing added. So we get the new story. Okay. Professor Owl struggled to flap his wings, finally returning to Brother Hanu to returning Brother Hanu to Dreamville. The once prosperous Dreamville lay in a state of disrepair, with ugly sculptures of boss stone scattered everywhere. Crocodiles roamed the streets, brazenly causing trouble for the residents. They wreaked havoc, destroying the houses that the origami birds meticulously built, kicked over Miss Note's splendid stage, gulping down all of Mr. Soda's sodas, and messing around with Old Man Wood's carefully trimmed canopy. Professor, the crocodiles have invaded the dreamscape! Really? Well, maybe they have made an unwise choice. Witnessing the chaotic scene, Brother Hanu recalled the time when this place was once the Nightmareville, letting out a hm in fury. He vowed to defeat the villainous Boss Stone despite his diminished size. Professor Owl, witnessing his student being bullied, also grew furious. Hoot hoot! We'll teach that cursed Boss Stone a lesson, Brother Hanu. Let me assist you. Professor Owl soared to the rooftop of the town hotel, a location hidden from Boss Stone's view. He hooted, summoning all the origami birds in town. These little helpers painted the sky with vibrant colors. Professor, how did you manage to let the nightingale? Hehe, <laughs> I have faith in these youngsters. No one knows about the weapons in the dreamscape better than they do. So is the owl... 
So Old Man Wood has to be the progenitor of the Oak family, right? Mr. Soda, Iris family, maybe? No, Miss Note would be Iris family. So Mr. Soda, because Ideen Park, I think, is named for the creator of Soul Glad. So it would have to be Ideen. So it has to be the progenitor of the Alfalfa family, maybe? I don't know where, I guess the origami birds would have to be like the faction involved with old, uh, with, um, has to be the faction involved with, with the owls, so it has to be the oak family. Boss Stone is definitely the IPC, right? Like IPC, Ten Stone Hearts, like, you know, the whole preservation, Amber Lord, all that. It all connects. Yeah. I guess that's the only thing that makes sense in my mind. Boss Stone and his minions were taken aback by the overwhelming number of origami birds. They've never seen so many birds. Professor Owl handed them some secret blueprints. After reading them, the birds wiped away their tears, regained their spirits, and began working on top of the houses occupied by Boss Stone. Before Boss Stone could react, the entire town underwent a transformation thanks to the origami birds. Mr. Soda's bottle shack turned into a formidable cannon. Miss Note's gala cruise became a battleship. Even Old Man Wood's Oak Mansion, Oak Mansion, transformed into a wooden dinosaur ready to devour crocodiles. This is so cool, Professor. We should be ha make more of these in the dreamscape. Uh, uh no. Boss Stone and his minions trembled in terror, overwhelmed by the creations of the origami birds. They sought refuge inside Town Hotel. This caused Professor Owl to worry. The hotel was the most magnificent building in Dreamville and the most profitable business in town. It must not be damaged. Seeing the formidable weapons halting at the gate, hesitant to attack, Boss Stone understood the bird's worries and let out a sinister laughter. Ha 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 ha! You dare not attack me, you stupid birds! Minions, come to me! Toss some lip matches and torch these monsters down to ashes! The crocodiles hurled the ignited matches at the origami bird's weapons, reducing them to ashes. Repelling them in the dreamscape is just a temporary solution. Even if we defeat the crocodiles here, our far power disadvantage to reality remains desperate. If we lose the central sector, all the kids in the dreamscape will be in danger. Don't worry, Professor. <laughs> we still have Hanunu. Ah! Ah! Using the real name, Hanunu. Oh, nice! Clocky's like the orphan of Koss. I don't think so. Because Clocky's supposed to be the watchmaker. And I think, if I remember, I think we're going with the idea that the watchmaker is Mikhail. And Mikhail, I'm assuming, is Misha's grandpa, who was a nameless, who gave Misha his express ticket that he wears on his tie thing. I think that's how it works. Okay. Anyway, oh right, Brother Hanu has returned, and he's the protagonist of this tale. However, with his tiny size, how's Brother Hanu expected to defeat those colossal crocodiles with their fearsome jaws? Professor Owl furled his brow. The origami bird sighed with concern, and even Clocky, transformed into a statue, reflected worry in his eyes. However, Brother Hanu remained resolute, his expression unwavering as he silently advanced toward the hotel. He let a confident... <clears throat> Most of their forces are probably deployed on the front lines, but they definitely have some troops guarding their main vessel, so be careful, Hanunu. Hanu infiltrated the hotel unarmed while Boss Stone's minions patrolled the corridors, fearful that someone might steal the treasures amassed by their boss here. Thanks to his small stature, Brother Hanu skillfully evaded the villains within the hotel, his eyes scanning for any signs of Boss Stone. Upon entering the lobby, Brother Hanu spotted Lieutenant Chitters, Boss Stone's trusted sidekick. Lieutenant Chitters was an even larger crocodile than Boss Stone, creating an impenetrable barrier that not even a mosquito could pass through. Before a single shot from the Hanu launcher would have dealt with this big oaf. Now, however, Hanu needs to come up with another plan. I trust in your abilities, but with your current stature, it's best to not go head to head with someone in high grade IPC battle suit. The dialogue's becoming more real as it progresses, chat. Oh, it's, it's overlapping now. Oh, by the way, what's the difference between analog TV versus digital TV? My mother tried using the national channels, but there's just static and no one, and no, this isn't Silent Hill. Uh, I'm pretty sure analog TVs exist, but I, I think that depends on your service. If it has to do with channels. Um, but I don't know. I'm not too familiar with like TV terminology, so I'm the wrong person to ask. Anyway, uh, what now? As Hanu hit atop a storage shelf to brainstorm, Lieutenant Chitter suddenly came walking over. Chit, chit. <laughs> I think I smell the scent of a wolf. 
Confronted with the approaching Lieutenant Chitters, Brother Hanu had no means of evasion. A clash became inevitable. Bracing himself for the battle, Brother Hanu lunged at Lieutenant Chitters. However, Lieutenant Chitters didn't even notice the tiny Brother Hanu and accidentally swallowed him whole in an instant. Had Brother Hanu been devoured? Clamorous sounds of mechanical collisions, roaring, and gunshots. Gunshots? Chit! Is something wrong with my nose? The dumb crocodile glanced left and right, scratching his head in confusion. Lieutenant Chitters felt something between his teeth, but paid it no mind. After all, this sloppy crocodile never bothered to floss his teeth. That's how Brother Hanu escaped his jaws. Brother Hanu deftly maneuvered between Lieutenant Chitters' razor-sharp teeth and made his way through the dangerous mouth, hiding inside a tooth cavity. I told you not to engage in a head-on clash, Hanunu. You really should have listened. All right, Professor. We both know his style. Well, now that you're inside the Mecca, you won't rouse any suspicion from the guards, and the life support devices contained within will help you address your injuries. With that, Hanu found the best hiding spot. Okay, so this is all a metaphor. So there's this giant mech. And uh, Hanunu managed to sneak his, himself into the mech without being noticed by the pilots. Okay. This is cool. Yeah, this is really cool. It's a great way to help discover the history. He's trying to, like, divine through, like, the secret coding here. Okay. Chapter 3. Wait, wait. Did I finish here? Yeah, with that, Hanu found his... Okay, I was like, wait, I don't remember grunting at the end, so... Okay. Brother Hanu managed to stay safe, but simply hiding in wouldn't cut it. He had to find Boss Stone and defeat him, or else Dreamville would be taken over by the crocodiles. However, how could Brother Hanu locate Boss Stone while trapped inside Lieutenant Chitter's tooth cavity? Not to worry, though. Our cool hero Hanu will always find a way. Yeah, he always finds a way. After all, he's the head of the Bloodhounds and the legendary rebel who sparked countless revolutions. Head of the Bloodhounds. Okay. He's a wolf. A canine. So a Bloodhound. Okay. So a new news where the Bloodhound family comes from. So we have Bloodhound family, Oak family, um, Alfalfa. Um, I assume the owl is Nightingale. And who am I missing? Oh, Iris has to be the bird, right? Yeah, Iris has to be the songbird, right? Yeah, there's a lot of juicy lore here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I only use TV for Netflix because most of the national channels bore me to death with annoying dub soap operas, many Turkish ones, by the way. Boring and tedious news and barely any movies. Yeah, I can imagine depending on your area, um, Netflix might not be as ideal. It's really good for English-speaking countries, I think, overall, as far as, like, it has a wide variety of stuff for you. Um, for me, though, like, most of the stuff I care about is, like, anime, and there's, like, only, like, a handful of anime that, like, I haven't seen already that I want to see on Netflix. Same thing with Disney Plus and all that stuff that they did. It's like, goodness me, I wish, I wish they wouldn't get into the anime scene because, like, they just make it so much harder to watch stuff you want for uh legally anyway on to the story yeah look there's not always find a way of revolution okay yeah inside lieutenant chitter's mouth brother hanu meditated but the crocodile's terrible breath assaulted his delicate nose unable to bear it any longer he looked out disgusted <laughs> Chit! brother hanu i heard brother hanu's voice the <laughs> Startled Lieutenant Chitters, who anxiously searched every corner for Brother Hanu, but to no avail. Watching Lieutenant Chitters' funny reaction, Brother Hanu came up with a brilliant idea. He kept making noise inside Lieutenant Chitters' mouth, confusing the crocodile more and more. They know someone has infiltrated their capital ship. A portion of their force are returning to defend. Be careful, Hanunu, but I think they won't expect to find you hiding in the armored mechs that are looking for the prisoner. So he's on the capital ship, so it's not just any mech, it's a giant, like, capital ship mecha. Okay. Chit chit! Where are you, Brother Hanu? Lieutenant Chitters frantically searched, almost tearing the hotel upside down. He sensed Brother Hanu's presence right next to him, but couldn't find that cool, dark figure no matter what. Lieutenant! Brother Hanu's voice is coming from you! Lieutenant Chitters' sidekick noticed the situation and informed the not-so-brainy boss. Chit! Could Brother Hanu be hiding on me? Lieutenant Chitters stripped himself naked, hoping to find Brother Hanu, but he was still nowhere to be found. Meanwhile, Brother Hanu continued to make noises in his mouth, pushing Lieutenant Chitters closer to, to a mental breakdown. Chit! Could it be that Brother Hanu has learned to become invisible? If that's the case, I must report to Boss Stone immediately! In a panic state, Lieutenant Chitters raced up the stairs while naked. This is all part of Brother Hanu's plan, and soon he would confront Boss Stone with no effort of his own. The command center is on this floor! You really are a genius, Hanunu. Okay, so... He was... He got onto the capital ship with the Mecca, right? 
Um, but they couldn't figure out that, that he sent out signals indicating that he was on the ship somewhere. And they basically searched the entire ship, every nook and cranny, but they couldn't find him. But they knew that there was a problem where he was somewhere. So they tried to immediately report to Boss Stone what was happening. Because there may be um, some unexpected complications with what was going on with the rebels. Specifically with Hanu, uh, Hanunu's. And they, that ended up leading them, uh, they ended up taking the ship right back to the main fleet with the head of the IPC, who's presumably Boss Stone. Yeah, probably the prison warden, if I had to guess, who was in charge of all the prisoners before the rebellion. Yeah, in terms of Netflix, I also only use it for anime. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Loki, don't you want to recommend a few good animes to watch due to story or something remarkable in your opinion? I want to add something to my new long backlog and try finishing one thing for once. Uh, go to the anime thing, and if you can search by just, like, my name in the anime channel, I give my impressions on series I've watched. Um, and I tend to watch a good variety of stuff, but if you're looking for a specific genre, I'd be happy to throw out some options too, but yeah. Just use the anime channel and feel free to tag me if needed. Alright, so... Yep, we got this. All right, last one, chat. Shit! Boss Stone! Terrible news! Shit! Lieutenant Chitters burst into the opulent suite, shouting in panic. Boss Stone, still dreaming in his grand bubble bed, was abruptly awakened by the sight of a naked, chubby crocodile standing before him. What are you doing, you idiot? Seized with fury, Boss Stone unleashed a powerful smack of his tail upon Lieutenant Chitters' face, knocking out his teeth. Brother Hanu, who had been hiding in a tooth cavity, was propelled out as well. Seizing the opportunity, Brother Hanu swiftly found refuge in the corner of Boss Stone's room, ready to strike like a wolf. The enemy's main forces are returning to reinforce Hanunu. Are you holding up well? A confident... <clears throat> shit, shit. Brother Hanu has returned, Boss Stone, and he's become invisible. I only heard his cool, <clears throat> but couldn't find him anywhere. Lieutenant Chitter's mention of the name Brother Hanu sent a shiver down Boss Stone's spine. That cursed Brother Hanu! I see. Now get out of here, and next time, wear your pants before coming to me! After dismissing Lieutenant Chitters, Boss Stone grew increasingly anxious. Although he had shrunk Brother Hanu to a tiny size, he knew that Brother Hanu was still the valiant hero of Dreamville. Boss Stone unlocked his safe and looked at the Hanu launcher he had stashed away. He sighed in relief when he thought how Brother Hanu was even smaller than his own teeth right now. You hear this, Brother Hanu? Even if you've come back, there's no way you can defeat me in your tiny form! Boss Stone bellowed, believing that Brother Hanu would hear his words. And indeed, Brother Hanu did. You found the ammunition warehouse? But even with enough ammunition, you can't just can't eliminate all these crocodiles, can you? A disdainful hmm. Boss Stone returned to his dreams on his large bed, but uneasiness plagued him. He slept restlessly as his beautiful dream turned into a nightmare due to that scare. Emerging from the shadows, Brother Hanu stepped forward and opened the cabinet, which now appeared hundreds of times larger than him. He stepped inside. What did you say? Wait! Hanunu! No! A chuckling. <clears throat> the Hanu launcher was right in front of him. Tiny Brother Hanu struggled to carry the ammunition and load it into the weapon. Stop it, Hanunu! You can't do that! A disapproving. <clears throat> the noise from the cabinet awakened Boss Stone once again. Could it be that Brother Hanu is really here? Fear gripped Boss Stone as he gulped and rose from his bed. No fear, my brothers! He's now so tiny that we can crush him in a single bite! Boss Stone called out all of his fellow crocodiles, all of whom huddled together in the room near the cabinet. Don't go, Hanunu! What should I do without you and Penacody? I resigned. <clears throat> the crocodiles opened the cabinet, only to be confronted with the dark muzzle of the launcher and tiny brother Hanu standing beside the firing button. I'm sure you can do it. Because you are the watchmaker. Brother Hanu let out a cool <clears throat> and stepped on the firing button. A cool, <clears throat> a deafening explosion, followed by absolute silence. So, Hanu found the weapons depot. I think shrinking... No, I was thinking maybe shrinking was a metaphor for him being, like, isolated from everybody. But I don't know if that makes absolute sense. But at least the general sense, whether or not there's, like, some shrinking shit involved, would be that... He found the weapon storage, right? He went into the uh, the weapons uh, the weapons armaments, right? And he basically set it, rigged it so that way it would all explode along with everybody there after leading them as a group to that place. So it's like I'm gonna take you all with me. Okay, yeah. So this this uh, this Hanu's adventure, maybe it's the Watchmaker. I don't know, but somebody wants us to read these. 
and get the true history of Pentacony that's been hidden. Where is it? I want to confirm something. Maybe he was crippled somehow? That's true. It could be that he was crippled in some way. This place holds such fond memories. Right. Care to reminisce? Oh no, we don't want to browse. Let's go back to this. So the shallow stuff was the bubble, was the, okay. Brother Hanu and others have already left the prison. You need to catch up to them to using the spheroid, right? The prisoners of the neighboring subdivision have glimpsed the light of hope. It's not enough. You need to draw the rage out from within them. That's how we got everybody to start rebelling. With a few more keys, the dreamville prison will be yours to control. You feel like a bright future is about to arrive, as if a red carpet spills forth beneath your feet. Enter the chaotic dreamscape and look for your companions. Okay, because I was wondering if there was... I can't remember if there was a thing about um, a weapons depot at any point. So I was really curious there. Yeah, that's a lot to that's a lot to chew on. All right, chat. So, uh, impromptu little lore thing, but I was really intrigued by that text message and felt the need to do it immediately. I don't know if you guys would want to see me do more of that stuff in the future with my narration and everything. If we could just have story hour or we go through a bunch of the lore and stuff. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. That was some really good stuff. Oh yeah, I forgot. There's also this videotape I, I picked up. That's really creepy. We'll read that some other time, though. But yeah, there's a lot of spooky stuff in Pentacone here. There's a, there's a big hidden history that is trying to be told. But like, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna end, we're gonna end things here for now. Yeah. This covers all that I want to do today, basically. We got to do a little bit of an event, a little bit of talking to people on side stuff, and then a little bit of lore, which I wasn't expecting. Yeah, now I'm gonna be thinking about that. So now we know... Now we have, like, a vague idea of all the individual factions of prisoners who ultimately became the five families in the family, right? It's really the Hind Hunter's Nightmare Retread. Well, yeah, that's the idea, right? Like, you go into the true dreamscape and it becomes an, an uh, increasing nightmare, right? So, like... Yeah, let's go here, right? So, with all things considered, I'm starting to wonder... Yeah, I'm starting to wonder, um what we're going to learn next patch. Because next patch should be the big boss in 2.2. Yeah, that, it's going to be pretty crazy, I think. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Ah, Pentacone's just so good, chat. Take care, Loki. Thank you for the stream. Yeah, may that flames guide me. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Have a good one, okay? I'm going to wish you all well. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you like the content here. I really appreciate everything that you guys have done to help propel the channel. I mean, I never expected that we would get to where we are right now, and I'm very happy to do this with you all. It's a great way to help me detox and for you guys to get some entertainment, I guess. And, well, as long as I'm entertaining, I'll keep on doing it. So, later. Bye-bye. Hmm. Memories seem to be different.